take yourself to the awareness of the spiritual self i the soul the life energy in this body i am a radiant being of light spiritual light i the soul i am self luminous i am the energy of my core qualities my core spiritual natural qualities as i come in this spiritual awareness of the self i naturally step out of anything of this world the story the people the events i step out of all of those and i experience my inner peace the peace that i am always that pure inner space within me that holds love strength and wisdom and i find myself connected to the supreme reservoir the supreme soul the supreme light shiv baba the almighty the benefactor i experience very subtle constant energy flow from the supreme energy the supreme light this i feel i am always full i lack nothing and being full i constantly give 
and I constantly appreciate these natural qualities in me and the natural qualities of other beings. The unique qualities each one of us possesses. When I connect to everyone through this spiritual form, through spiritual qualities and spiritual relation, I feel free. This is the practice I have to pay attention to. For a few moments, I enjoy this feeling of true liberation and true connection with others. Om Shanti. Thank you. Can't hear you. Uh, you're muted. Thank you, Sister Sukanya. That was lovely really felt that I could allow my day to just disappear and be present. Thank you. And for those of you who've just arrived, welcome. Tonight's topic is on the how of forgiveness and Sister Sukanya from the San Francisco Meditation Center and myself, Elizabeth, from the Anabuti Retreat Center have prepared a uh, an evening with you and we hope it will be enlightening and a time of sharing and so we are going to offer our own experience of forgiveness whether we're a recipient of being forgiven or an experience of forgiving someone else and so we thought we would Think about, you know, that and also all of you, if you could think of a time as well, that sensation, that experience and what qualities came with it in forgiving. Either, either being forgiven or forgiven someone else. So. I know what it's like to. Um, you know, even being forgiven by yourself and to let go of, of, you know, things that perhaps you've held on for many years or even something maybe you said to someone. And it was good because then I realized my mistake and I just said, okay, but right, I won't, you know, I think I need to be more, I guess the, the situation was, um, you know, making time for someone and um, being available to someone. And um, I gave a kind of short answer, <laughs> curt answer. And um, I realized that all I had to do was say, you know, I'm really busy right now. Can I um, find another time that we could um, you can show me what it is you wanted to show me. And so what I did was I made that time not only 
did I just sort of let that go and realize, okay, fine. Um, I should have handled that differently. But then without making a, like a, a big to do about it, all I did was make time for that soul as soon as I had a slot of time today. And I just said, oh, what was that that you wanted to show me? And I, I didn't say I was sorry, but I felt it anyway. I could feel that by my company and really t listening and taking interest that it really sort of relinquished that situation and um, honored her time and my time. So that was a good feeling of lightness. Sister Sukanya. Um, I have, um, I can think of many incidences where um, the experience of forgiveness, of being forgiven or forgiving someone. Um, once, um, you know, I remember uh, being overcome with this emotion of um, um, emotion towards my parents that um, uh, that they they could have done something better for me and uh, somehow I felt I was observing the emotion coming up like a wave rising like a wave and at the same time I am wondering that why is this coming up? There is no reason for this to come up. But it was very real and I was feeling very deeply somehow. I had never thought anything like that before. And all of a sudden this emotion started to come up, arise. That uh, they should have handled, uh, you know, handled me differently. They should have uh, you know, done something better for me and so on and so forth. But as I was observing the emotion, as I was observing these thoughts, I was, you know, um, you know I was being okay with them. And then um, slowly the wise part within the self started to explain to that, um, you know, Child, childish, um, discontent part, and you know, parents did whatever you know they thought was the best for me. They gave me the best education that they thought, you know, would help me in life, and so on and so forth. And um, no, I could see slowly the childish emotion being satisfied. And um, I felt good about this whole process for some reason. And never again such an emotion came up. And so um, I see that, you know, as an, um, as a gesture of forgiveness. Um, I, I don't, think that I, you know, that it is forgiving my parents or something like that. But it is, I think forgiveness is more for the self. And I see it that way. Um, that when we, um, when I saw that, you know, I was giving some understanding to myself to help overcome my own weaker side a side that liked to be discontent, a side, um, a, the childish side that liked to complain about someone out of nowhere. So I see that when we are able to give our attention, our understanding to that side of ours, we feel that liberation. Maybe in from other angle, it could be uh, called as forgiving that other person. But I think the act of forgiveness is for our self, it goes on within the self. And it also takes the pressure off from the other party that is involved, 
which is which is very helpful so that was a little story from my side well thank you uh, sister sukanya I, I i some of the adjectives you've used i've never seen so that's interesting um you are definitely not selfish and you <laughs> I don't see you in that light, but that um, it's interesting um, when we catch ourselves, whatever childish nature that could be there. I think um, I think all of us can relate to that when we sort of dig our heels in and we're used to getting our way uh, with sit certain behavior, I think. Um, I guess I'll call it the go-to behavior, but Mm -hmm. Of course, we've learned that it's these sense scars, you know, and they don't really serve us. So how do we, you know, how do we let go of that? I mean, first is to have that vision. <clears throat> what does it mean? You know, what is the optimum in a, in a relationship? And we can... I mean, I can talk about, oh, I should accept everyone and I shouldn't have expectation um, because it usually is a higher demand of others than what they can give. It's almost a setup. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And then they're not able to follow through. And sure enough, I would have gotten the signals if I was really attentive and listening that perhaps what I was asking was beyond that person's capacity, let's say. Um, now in the fact of parents and some situations, because you're so small, you don't have a choice, you don't have many options, but to choose a perspective of forgiveness, I think is very healthy. Um, I've heard of I've heard stories from uh, friends who've you know had horrific childhood, and I think to myself, oh my goodness! And they're so easy about it; they've totally forgiven their parent, whichever parent, and they've really made peace with it. And I think that in this case, sometimes these situations really allow you to see this. Um, this game, if I may call it a game of um, bad and good, and um, I guess perhaps the dualisticness. And I'm thinking of really extreme uh, acts of forgiveness, you know, these profound acts of forgiveness, like Viktor Frankl, the uh, famous um, activist, or, he's an activist or, um, he really spoke for forgiveness and he was a survivor of the Holocaust as a child. He was in the, um, I think, don't know if it was Auschwitz or which where, but um, he had this realization that these people, um, if they're, if they are treating me ill, why should I treat them ill? You know, why should I react in the same manner? Um, and uh, he would say please and thank you and so on, even though he would get this horrible food and such. But he, he realized and made such peace with it and it motivated and inspired not only his life, but many others. Mm -hmm. um, and so what does that look like when we climb over that wall uh, where we are um, blocking someone and when we can't forgive the other um, I mean, I can speak of one parental relationship where I thought I forgave. In my mind, I forgave. But then I came to know recently that I still had you know, some, some uh, issues. So I, I think it would be interesting because I talk about forgiveness a lot and I just thought, wow, I thought I forgave my mother and um, I, I how to go a step farther. What does that look like once we've let go? 
What are the steps? What are we aiming for? Any thoughts? I, I like to look at this word forgiveness or forgiving, to be forgiving as two words, forgiving. That I am here for give, you know, to give. And when I look at it in that way, then when I stop giving, when, that is when I go against my true nature, that is when the um, emotions get blocked, emotions get locked, um, emotions are not able to flow and there is heaviness. And because there is that always some other party involved and that other party could be, um, you know, um, our own habit, you know, me and my habit. So there is always this other party. And um, so whenever there is that heaviness built up, whenever there is this heavy um, emotional, um, you know, investment or um, obstruction, whatever uh, the feeling is, mm -hmm. Um, I see that somewhere we are not giving what is required. Okay. Either we have to um, extend our understanding, just understanding that in that moment, um, uh, this is what the person felt, this is what the person thought should be spoken, this was the perception of the person. Now I just have to give that, um, have that acceptance of that behavior, acceptance in the sense that, okay, this is where the person was, this was the level the person was at that time. And maybe in the next moment, that same person would have realized something else, no? something higher, we do not know. And we are stuck in that one moment with that person. And we take that person um, as, you know, as that behavior, as someone who always behaves like that. But the person may have moved on. There is a high, very high probability. And so um, first to see our own self that where am I? Where am I stuck? What is bothering me? Mm -hmm. What thoughts do I keep having? What emotions do I harbor or what emotions erupt? Keep mm -hmm. erupting whenever I think about that incidence or that person or whatever the event, whatever it is. So first to observe that and finding that, okay, this is where I am stuck. And so what am I not giving here? Am mm. I not uh, understanding it? Am I not giving a, a higher thought to it? Am I not giving a benefit of doubt, for example? You know? Just a benefit of doubt that, that maybe there has been some misunderstanding. You know, maybe the person had to take out the emotion in this way. You know, just so that uh, they themselves um, went out their own frustration. You know? So, um, you know, just giving a benefit of doubt. So always the second step is that to check what am I not giving? Acceptance, understanding. And also as we um, go through life experiences, as the body gets older, but the understanding gets wiser, the wisdom becomes more profound. And that is how um, it usually is and it should be. And so applying that wisdom, am I not applying enough wisdom that I have accumulated from life experiences or from spiritual texts, wherever the, uh, the source comes from? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 
giving no what can i give from my side and when i say when i use these words i and my i am a soul a spiritual energy and so what i have is whatever is spiritual you know peace love wisdom happiness that is what i have so i have to give that mm-hmm. and the third thing um i i have seen in myself that having a higher vision mm-hmm. a greater vision no a uh, greater vision in the sense um that um uh, focusing on one's spiritual study understanding the spiritual aspects deeper in different ways through different perspectives through different insights so if i have engaged myself um in a, a higher vision in a higher pursuit in a higher pursuit example mm-hmm. i have taken is spiritual study let me you know let me understand uh the spiritual this one particular spiritual point deeper so when we are engaged in that we give our um our productive energy to something higher a higher pursuit and that helps to overcome or to go beyond whatever happened between the two parties that has made me you know made me heavy or something um to go beyond that because if i do not have a higher pursuit mm-hmm. then um naturally the mind keeps going to what it has experienced because the mind starts to find solace or comfort uh from others by speaking about it by thinking about it you know so but that is not a very uh, very useful space to be in mm-hmm. okay this happened what lesson have i learned and that is another um another step i learned from it no what have i learned from it and i hold a higher pursuit and my learning so this incidence has added a very um a profound life experience in my memory bank and i use that towards exploring my higher pursuit adding to the richness of life so using every event every encounter any heaviness any emotional eruption for enriching the self to keep that goal and then we find that oh there is no such thing as to forgive or be forgiven but every moment is enriching me and then i am enriching others so so i like this flow of thinking this flow of energy this forgiveness you know uh, whenever there is uh, such a need that oh uh, i should forgive this one and you know uh, move on the action has been performed already the mm-hmm. person um, for example if two people are involved the other person has performed some action and i have also performed some action maybe i did not i may not have said anything in that situation but all these thoughts that are going on um in my head these thoughts i am creating that wow this person was not so good with me uh, so on and so forth these thoughts are also a karmic creation you know this is also a karma being performed and so both parties have performed their that's karma. very important thank you keep yeah. going i i just you know because you're on a flow here and i i really appreciate that that is so key that even our waste thoughts about the situation continue to create karmic accounts is that what i heard yes yeah 
And so both the parties have performed karma. And uh, the, the you know, way karma works is any action performed has a consequence of it. And so whatever karma I have performed, I am going to experience its consequence. And so I have to come out of it. Whatever karma the other person has performed, the other person is responsible to overcome those consequences. Mm -hmm. And so I have to look at what I am doing. And if I take myself through the higher pursuits I, I am engaged in, um, if I take my level to something higher, I will be watchful of what karma I am performing. And that will, that will help everyone in any situation to, uh, to, uh, keep the, uh, to keep the situation you know, less uh, intense mm -hmm. or both, both the parties become wiser because at least one of the parties involved is at a little bit higher level. So both parties benefit. Mm -hmm. So this is how I like to look at forgiveness. No? Forgiveness is a journey of enrichment of the self. And then mm -hmm. there is no such thing as I forgive you. you know, there is no such thing because it is all about what is going on in my inner self. What meaning have I given to that behavior? And so I have to come to terms with what I have created in my head. Mm -hmm. so it is really uh, working on one's own inner self and being the other person, whatever they have been. And our energy being uplifted helps the other person also to realize some, something higher, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. That actually answered my question, how to look over the wall, beyond the wall. And perhaps that, that feeling comes because in some acts or some uh, betrayal or deception or um, misunderstanding, sometimes it's simply that um, and expectations that aren't fulfilled or even debts that aren't paid, um, somehow we feel a moral obligation to witness justice or something when, um, um, and so then these ill feelings feel justified to fester and hang there. And um, even though I think perhaps this is what's happening where I will feel that I, in the case of my mother, I had forgiven her maybe conceptually, mentally, maybe even verbally, but I've still kept on to some, some pain. Um, and perhaps it takes time for these layers to kind of surface and to release them, to let them go. Um, and I like this idea of the higher pursuit perhaps to learn from, and what do you gain? What, what fruits do you harvest from this experience, right? Um, so I, I think what it comes to in my heart, I was sort of asking as you were sharing that, because I went, wow, that's it, higher pursuit, that perhaps you're, you don't know how to fulfill that void that, that expectation you had of a parent, let's say, or a loved one or a, a sibling or um, even your children, you know, and you can forgive them on a mental le level, but then there was that unfulfilled desire or um, expectation. And perhaps, I mean, the thought came was, in my case, that I need to make God my mother because the soul still needs that 
nourishment that it didn't get as a child or in that relationship. And none of us are perfect. And we try to support each other in spite of our failings. And, and of course, we think we know the, someone, you may live with someone for 30 years and you still don't know them. Um, and uh, no one is really meant to fill those holes, those spaces that are unfulfilled within, within the soul. Only God can do that. I have to really, um, you know, create such a deep relationship in that way and, and let, let God love me in that way or fulfill me in that way, whatever that quality that wasn't there or if, we, I mean, the step is to identify it and I totally agree too with you, um, Sister Sukanya, that um, there has to be a flow. The stagnant energy of resentment, um, um, of of feeling uh, unjust or 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 betrayed, um, it really just keeps festering, and it just keeps going deeper and deeper, and creating almost like a underground well. And you don't even know it's there until one day when you're vulnerable or something similar happens and it just sort of is bigger than life. And um, uh, so for me, that step of letting go um, is the first step is to accept that there's a problem, that there's something going on and to accept the other person. And I've done that. I really accept the other person. Um, and then to surrender to that divine presence, to, like you said, that higher pursuit, that frequency, that vibration. Because I think I'm just seeing it now on a different level that if I don't surrender it to that a higher energy, uh, whatever that divine reference is for you, however way you may name it, but it has to go to that higher frequency because that's where I will get the nourishment that the soul needs, the love, the peace of mind, the regard, the, um, the sense of security, the stability, whatever is essential. Um, and then um, once I surrender to that higher power, God, divine energy, um, then I think that sense of purpose comes in. You know, then you feel, wait a minute, now I understand why I'm here, what I'm, what I'm supposed to do here because I've filled that void. I've, I've nourished that aspect of the soul. And so once I have that some sense, and of course purpose keeps evolving, you know, it's not something that, oh yeah, now I know what that, you know, it keeps evolving as we mature. Um, and one, but once I taste it, I'll get insights on where to go. Um, and then of course, then I can let it go. I can release because there is a new paradigm waiting for me. There's a new way of being waiting for me. I have to let it happen. And whatever the sequence of events that have come into my life are exactly what is needed. I mean, I know that intellectually, conceptually, but thank you, actually, because this higher pursuit, this word, somehow it just clicked. And that's my little seven steps is to accept. But really, you have to surrender. You have to embrace that supreme being. And then find that sense of purpose. Gain those insights. Then to release, let go, and evolve, move on. So 
that's worked for me, but now I can see where that stuck place is, you know. So thank you. And I also like um, too that when we allow, when we are in that um, place where we forgive and let go, I know this one term came that you and I were sharing and I, and um, you know, I said, yes, you have to go deeper. And then you were using a term, yes, we have to go higher. And it seems like it, it goes the opposite direction. And even though we understood we were meaning the same thing, but it isn't actually because both are taking us out of the drama and getting the gold, you know, the gems that are buried below and we can go deeper to get, you know, something more personal, something that I can, um, I guess, uh, become. But the higher I would say if I could offer, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about this, because you're the one who was talking about, yes, we have to get higher in our conversation that we had. And I would just say, it's like, yeah, that's where we get our perspectives and not to, you know, to let it consume me. And, I, and I, I'm realizing how important both need to be there. So I, I thought maybe, you, what did you yeah. mean by higher? Yeah, uh, by higher, how I look at it as uh, something that is not stuck in the gross um, mm -hmm. surface level of the worldly matters, but something that is um, spiritual, something that is truth, something that is um, you know, truth means which is always which always holds um, holds the prime most. Um, uh, knowledge maybe mm -hmm. at any time at any time so investing our time investing our thoughts in that which is spiritual spiritual means which is eternal which mm -hmm. means um, it is the truth which means it is always beyond um, the superficial worldly matters mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we um, if we are engaged in the study of that understanding that spiritual what is spiritual here what is spiritual in this behavior you know, the behavior is very much you know um, maybe of anger maybe of whatever but what is spiritual here mm -hmm. to engage in that study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, a, as a text, as a spiritual text, and also to take um, whatever is going on around us and also within us, as far as the story part is concerned, um, our behavior part is concerned, to take those as case studies for the spiritual study, as we are studying the spiritual text. Because I see whenever I... Um, whenever I am engaged in, in that study of the text, of exploring it for myself, of seeing the events around me, behaviors around me through that angle, then that keeps me empowered, that keeps me in my strength. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, it is so easy to fall prey to any emotion, to succumb to any emotion and um, when that happens, the soul mm -hmm. becomes weak because that is not the strength. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the ignorance that uh, we focus on and the ignorance doesn't give us, doesn't give the soul any strength. So you know, I see meditation as part of this spiritual study. Um, you know, so that is what I term as something higher, something beyond, something beyond the storyline. Yes, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes me um, 
uh, well, I, you know, I was just thinking about this aspect when we're able to let go of the pain, you know, it's when we take sorrow from an event, I will block energy. That's so true. Because if I take sorrow sooner or later, I will give that sorrow. It's almost as if the pain that perhaps that we receive from our parents is from generation upon generation. And it goes so way back. And we could say, oh, the, there wasn't love in this relationship. But then my mother didn't get it from her mother, which didn't get it from my grandmother, which, you know, the great, you know, so it's almost that we inherit some traits, but also we come into this world with our own personalities, with our own traits. And to be able to, to, I guess what I'm, I'm thinking it would be a wonderful offering is that I am not my pain. I uh, I don't want to identify with that anymore, let's say, and to release it, to let that go and to not take sorrow from others. And what I've been practicing um, for the, I guess, I guess the last maybe six months is um, to believe in the good intention of others because everyone will have their blind spot and they, you know, it's almost as if I have to forgive in every moment, but not to look at it as an act of forgiveness. Like, oh, you know, sometimes we can be arrogant in our forgiveness. You know, it becomes that I'm higher than you because I forgave you when really you're just pushing my buttons. Sometimes it's that where, oh, how about thank you for enlightening me on what I need to change. <laughs> It would be a whole different language, wouldn't it? <laughs> Rather than, oh, well, I forgive you. And it almost takes any ownership of the conflict away from me. Yeah. So I have to, I'm, I ha I'm in charge of myself and I have both hands on the driver's wheel when I'm awake that is at the wheel and soul conscious and God conscious and um, whatever comes to facilitate that. Let there be forgiveness at every step, but also like you said, a learning. I think that's key uh, to what is it? What's the higher purpose? What is it that I'm taking from this moment? And also I'm finishing accounts these relationships are have come to aid me in finishing karmic accounts anyway. and if i wallow in it it's only going to um create more accounts rather than complete so any other thoughts on that sister sukanya I, I agree. I like the um, the connection you brought um, about the you know about our connection with the supreme parent that we need relationships in our life. But at this point in time, no relationship can be completely fulfilling. Mm -hmm. So bringing in the um, relationship, the eternal relationship with the supreme, and filling ourselves through that relationship, mm -hmm. yes. feeling that sustenance from the Supreme Parent, um, you know, talking to the Supreme Friend and taking ourselves to the level of that Supreme Being. You know, that is, that is one of the keys, definitely. That will keep ourselves fulfilled and we will, we will be able to give happiness in our relationships instead of taking or expecting, we will be giving. Mm -hmm. And I see that, uh, that uh, shift within me. Previously, I would, you know, I would wait for the other person 
be good to me to give me to you know cooperate with me and so on but now i have switched that around knowing that i am a giver first mm -hmm. you know what whatever i can give you know i i have peace all the time i have love all the time these are my natural qualities so i keep giving them doesn't mm -hmm. matter what what um, others are doing you know i keep giving and then that keeps the self stronger and that also helps them get a better perspective of life because you know everyone is stuck somewhere so if we can help people see things uh in a in a different way uh, by our consistent behavior Mm -hmm. and slowly they get the trust that okay yeah i can also be um you know in this behavior in this um, i can interact in this way and so the trust gets built that's important yeah. mm -hmm. so trust trust flow higher pursuit embracing the divine um learning uh making it an, a learning and um uh i'm just sort of revising what we've shared very good yeah mm. and um not only learning but also a finishing completion mm. um a stepping stone to um because i feel that when the emotions are not um i want to say screaming at you i'm mean, probably that's a long a very you know dramatic term but sometimes it feels that way or blocking my vision and um i will only see that person in a certain light and we know that we, like you said we all have our shortcomings but we also have all of us have inner beauty and um to focus on that um when it, and i say focus on that because you still have a relationship with those people and you have an ongoing relationship and to invest in those qualities so that when you encounter them if i'm sensitive to the um those that have hurt me then that's what's going to continue to emerge in that encounter but if i invest in the qualities you know really seeing their humor and i've had this experience working for someone who was just like a big old grizzly bear and he was my boss and this was you know back when i was in my um uh, late 20s i think and i said you know what i don't want to change this person but i'm determined not to be influenced and not uh feel afraid of this person so i kept on seeing the sweetness i would see the humor i would see whatever goodness i could get from this relationship instead of um keeping a score oh yeah this one doesn't get along with you either oh see he did it again see he's angry now he's angry with this one oh now you know and we keep score like you know or an attorney consciousness right you're going to make your case but when i let go of that when i forgive and then i allow learning and investing in their good traits in this particular situation i stopped reacting and then i could actually respond in a way that he could relate to actually mm -hmm. instead of a, a frightened you know whatever the label might be um uh I was actually responding to his questions and so on and I I'll never forget that day when he said, you know, he said I've never met anyone quite like you, he said to me. And from that day on there was trust like you said, there was trust. And it wasn't that I wanted to change him. Mm -hmm. My aim was to change myself. Yeah. Not to be fixated on that tough coconut skin 
but to go into that sweet milk in the middle mm -hmm. and you keep boring holes into that coconut and then soon it becomes supple. And um, maybe I was the tough coconut, you know, I don't know, but it, it certainly worked. The formula worked. So any other thoughts? I'm, I'm good. Maybe we can open up to the audience. Thank you. Yes, um, I do see someone wants to ask a question. And so now we'd like to open it up for questions. And also, we would love to hear from you your insights or experiences of forgiveness and what benefits or what it is that you learned from that. Um, because we are all experienced in this department. And um, I, I, we wouldn't be here if we weren't on this Zoom call. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we can always learn more. And I see that Maher has a question, and I'd love to hear from you. Hello, Maher. Hi. Hello, Angel. Uh, I have a question. Um, um, Sukanya Ben said um, that she was angry with her parents um, one time, <laughs> and you said that too. Mommy said that too. Daddy said that too. Is there a way I can prevent it before that happens to me? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Um... When I mentioned that incidence, um, I wasn't angry. Uh, the emotion wasn't of anger, but I think it was about um, uh, not happy. It wasn't into that anger zone, but it was um, uh, not happy about what they did for me. But um, in a few minutes, the whole uh, incidence just lasted only for a few, few minutes. And um, I was able to explain to myself that they did whatever they thought was the best for me. You know, they didn't do that um, to, uh, to hinder my growth or to um, uh, not give me what I, I am supposed to receive from them they didn't have that thought. They had the thought that we are giving her the best. And that is what I said to myself. And that was the reality. And that is usually the reality. You know? That parents do the best for the children, whatever they think is the best in that moment. And so when I told that to myself um, a couple of times, I saw that, um, I could see that, you know, wherever they were at in the journey of their life, they did the best for me. Uh, and I was okay. It was just a few minutes, maybe one minute. You know, it just felt long, but it may be just for one minute, this whole incidence, or maybe two minutes. Okay. That, yeah. I have one more question. Parents always do best for us. I have one more question. Uh, why do you say childish? Childs don't do anything wrong. No, childish in the sense, I, am, I was just trying to uh, differentiate the two behaviors that we all exhibit. One is, uh, so uh, for one behavior, I didn't say childlike. I said childish. Childish means um, just to explain um, a behavior that is not um, mature enough, that is not filled with understanding enough, that is not filled with um, um, you know, understanding the other's perspective. You know? So that behavior I termed as childish. And we also have our other side, which is the wise side. Um, I often like to use the word, uh, use the term wise sage within us. You know, one is the childish part in us and other is the wise sage. You understand what is sage? No? Uh, sage is a type of plant. 
Oh, no, no. Uh, sage that... means, no, very good. <laughs> what is it? Sage, sage is a kind of plant. <laughs> herb, no? it is also a very good, good knowledge. But sage means a wise person, no? a wise person who has given um, enough thought, enough study in one's life. No? Sage means a wise person. And so um, a wise parent, no? childish, a uh, childish side of ours and a wise parent side of ours. And so that is why that is what I termed. The wise parent within us Sorry. knows that, mm. you know, I am I am just demanding for no reason. And um, you know, I am not understanding them. I'm just, you know, arguing for the sake of argument. You know, the wise parent is seeing from a higher ground is seeing the whole scene is taking in the whole scene in perspective instead of that small little incidents this one said this and that one said that that is a childish behavior no so, so and we have both of these parts okay uh, Balraj you had a question uh, no I'm going to make a comment you know um Raising children is like really difficult here as compared to India. So I grew up in India. So, but my kids are born and raised here. You know, they will always bring up something that you don't, don't understand it. You don't get it, you know. And one time I said, look guys, uh, when I gave birth to you, I didn't get any procedure book. So I'm not following any, you know, procedures. I can do this, this, this. I am trying to do the best of my knowledge. And that's what I would say to all the children. Parents always try to do their best. I don't think there's any parent they want to do anything, you know, or, bad for the children. But the thing is, sometimes we don't agree because there's a generation gap, you know, by the time we are in our 30s and the kids are like five or maybe even younger. So there's a difference, you know, so we think differently and they think, why do you want to tell us do this, 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 you know? So now I think um, they are bigger, you know, so now there's better understanding, you know, but when they are especially little, it, it gets harder, you know. So, but I know from my experience till today, I want to do the best for my children, you know. But um, there is always, you know, these little things, you know. So that's yeah. all I have to say. Thank you, Balraj. Very good. Yeah, there's, it's good to get perspective. Yeah. Can I expand on that a moment, for a moment? Yes, thank you. You, you know, um, in the Eastern culture, at least, uh, uh, Sister Sukanya would know it very well. The parents would give their blood and sweat and lives for their children. And they would never think ill of their children. Um, I have had experience with my mother when I was growing up several decades ago. I was I was very good in study, extremely good, top, always top or number one or number two in my class. Movies. But at the age of 10, 11, I got into going to movies very frequently. And back then in India, going to movie was not a big no no. Once a week was okay, but more than that was not not allowed. And for that, I was disciplined by my mother the way she knew the best, which which included beating me up too <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times, but not for a single moment I would hold anything against her, and I haven't for forty years because that's the way she knew. Because her concern was that oh, this he's a good student, but he's going to get astray because of this movie thing and going during the weekdays. I never skipped school or anything, but I got into not so good company and I would go during the weekdays. And so she, she, she got concerned. And so she dealt with it the way she thought was the best. And maybe it's a question also. I always, I always remember all those incidents very vividly in my mind. And I have told my children also this, this story 
number of times, but I have not even for a single second held anything against my mother because I thought that she had the best, my best interest in her mind and that's the way she practiced it. And I should, the question of forgiving or forgiveness does not arise at all. Do you agree with my logic or not? Very much. Yeah, very much. Yeah, whatever my mother, father did uh, for me, you know, sometimes in that moment for a split second, I may not have liked it, but immediately I knew that it was for my good that they are saying this to me. Right. Very true. Very true. Great. That you is, know, uh, mother, but my proud of you in this moment, Jagjit Bhai. <laughs> yes, yes, she is. She is very much. But my younger daughter always said, no, no, that was not fair. She was not nice to you. She was mean, <laughs> you know. But she she lived with us, you know, for a long time, 20 years, you know. Then we tried to make them understand, you know, that's not what she meant to do, you know. But kids here, they think differently. They said yeah. no. Mm -hmm. So then there is a difference, you know, how... Uh, because they're in totally different culture. So well, you the have times to... have changed. Nobody, nobody beats up kids back anywhere in, uh, that I know of. They, they may sit down and talk to them. But back then, 40, 45 years ago, more than that, beating was an easy thing, mm -hmm. especially boys. Boys were, used to get hit with a stick all the time. <laughs> See, in, uh, in our home, uh, my mom died when I was very young. So I grew up with my grandparents, you know. My grandma would never touch us. You know, she would just tell us how it need to be done. When somebody tell me they were beaten up, <laughs> I just couldn't believe, you know, that they were beaten up, you know. So I grew up in a different environment. She was very strict, you know, she will, her looks were enough, you know, she didn't have to touch, you know. She'll just say it in a very stern voice, you know, <laughs> which I think I do it to my children too. And that was enough, you know. Thank but this you. was very good. This was a really good talk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a good. It's a good topic, and I'm glad that you we're getting clarity. Mm -hmm. I think some. Are you raising your hand, Mahara? No, <laughs> she's playing with us. Uh, no, I am. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um. This. I think it was just a few uh, one hour ago. Um. I was in my class, my um, chorus class, and I was practicing for my solo, but I didn't get it, and I was kind of sad what to do. Oh, you didn't get the solo from your class? Oh, <laughs> sweetheart. A lot. Oh, I've had that happen to me. I'll t I'll, uh, I don't know if you want me to answer here, but I remember um, not getting the solo from my class back when I was 10 years old. And you know what, don't worry about it. Because it, you know, one day you will it and, and you'll just work harder for that. But you have a beautiful voice and a wonderful presence. And one day very soon, you will get all the parts you want. But it's just, you know, sometimes it's just learning you get some and you some you don't get you you can't get all of them mm -hmm. you can't get all the parts no it's to... i never got a part well yes and how old are you now nine ten, ten. ten. you're ten now yes ten ten yeah but um you know you will get yes in yesterday's program, if you were present, yesterday we had a, a International Women's Day celebration and also the Mahashivratri, the mm -hmm. connection with the divine celebration. Um, and Meher was the su superstar by herself. Oh my gosh, yeah. she was amazing. I was like, my mouth was open, okay, Meher? You were Yeah, wonderful. we all loved her solo song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, let's hear it from Maher. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so what should I tell my mind? Is what I'm oh, well, you know, it's hard, but, you know, 
I, I, I'm trying to remember what would be, you know, it's not it is hard and it, it feels sad, but that's okay. But the main thing is to believe in yourself because these things do happen, but you are a wonderful, wonderful um, child. You're not even, to me, you're just this amazing soul that I've known for a long time. And you, your gifts will certainly be enjoyed many times. And so this maybe will just, you work a little harder and you will get the part next time. You have many, many opportunities, many. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just a quick one that um, keep doing your best. No? Keep, keep practicing, keep putting in whatever it requires to, um, to become the best that you were yesterday. That's it. You keep doing that and opportunities keep coming. And whichever, uh, wherever you are supposed to perform, whichever part you are supposed to receive, you are going to receive it. Nobody else can have that part, you know? But from your side, you have to keep putting in your best, keep practicing, keep getting better and better and better. And you know, we're, that behind is you. we're behind you all the way. Yes. You have, we, you now have a fan club. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone has a quick suggestion for Mehesh? Oh, Vinod Bhai. I agree, Meher is the best. No? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, it is a very good question. I have sadness and disappointment around not getting something. Um, so uh, Michelle's offering this. It's a very good question that you asked. I have sadness and disappointment around not getting something I really love and want, and I am much older than her. How, how might you answer to an adult? Would be curious to see how the answer is similar or different. Sukanya, so uh, so Ben? I think the, um, from my side, I would say the same answer, that keep doing your best Keep putting in your best. Sometimes it just takes time. And uh, I love this. Um, there is a, a verse in one of the songs that uh, whatever is in your fortune, you are going to receive it. it. It is just a matter of time. Nobody can take that away from you. Mm -hmm. and you cannot receive it before time. And whenever the um, time is right, we do not know. And that is what makes us impatient. Yeah. And no one can take it from you. No one can take it from you. Yeah. And when there's this, you know, game of competition, this is what makes us stronger and better. And we'll go to places we never thought we would go before. So, you know, as far as achievements, there's, you know, healthy competition, you know. I want to add one. Uh... I want to tell Meher something that uh, it is sometimes good uh, that you don't get what you wanted. Mm -hmm. It's good. I have had many times, many, many times that uh, I wanted something and I did not get it. And then it made me more stronger. And then next time I got something, it was even bigger than what I wanted. So that, that's uh, I wanted to tell her. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts? You know, I um just this one uh, example is coming to my mind. You know the Indian uh, superstar Amitabh Bachchan who is in his you know late 70s now. Uh when he was young he was denied a job on the radio because of his voice and today he is famous because of his voice. 
So, you know, you just have to keep working on the on the best of yourself. And as Sister Elizabeth mentioned, Vinod Bhai mentioned, believe in yourself and you will receive it. And it's good that you don't receive something because then he would have been stuck with the radio probably. But now he is a famous movie star. Actually, when, um, when he got his first role, he was made mute for the same reason that his voice is bad. And, and he became famous because of his voice. He, he, he does movie, he did many back commentaries in the movies only because of his voice. Sometimes we have qualities, we don't recognize them. And like Vinod Bhai said, ongoing success after success is not good either. We should be held back sometimes. That keeps us humble. If you keep on getting success at everything you do, you might become arrogant. So true. <laughs> okay. So why don't we close with a meditation? Sound good? Um, yes. okay. All right. Oh, this Lisa has written something very beautiful. Oh, okay. A poem. Lisa, you want to read? No, it's it's actually the lyrics from a Rolling Stone song. But <laughs> it's I, I didn't write it. Yeah, yeah, but just read that. Oh, uh, no, you can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. But if you try sometime, you find you get what you need. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Meher says, wow, that my daddy loves that band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Meher, for joining and being part of this <laughs> wonderful gathering. Okay, angels. Thank you. And let's, uh, shall we close with a meditation to honor the time we've had together? And I'll just offer a couple images for forgiveness. Just take a nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And take note of how you feel right now. And just imagine that you're sitting on a, a big log on a beach near the ocean waves. And imagine each wave coming onto the shore You feel the warmth of the sun and a cool breeze. Perhaps you even smell the water of the salt water of the ocean. And as you sit there, You think of someone you would like to forgive. Or perhaps someone that you may even find a challenge to forgive. But you feel ready. And you find a small stick and you can write their name in the sand. And then imagine a big wave comes up onto the shore 
and sweeps away, swallows that name, erasing the charge, any pain, just to let it go. I forgive. I forgive. And the vastness of the ocean is so big. And even though the ocean may take away that pain, it also embraces me with the coolness to heal the heart and cool the mind. And perhaps there's one more thing I'd like to forgive. And I write maybe something that I'd like to forgive in myself. And I can write that something on the sand. And the big wave comes and swallows the writing on the sand. And I forgive. I forgive. And now I've cleared the path and I fill that place in the soul with that warmth and love of the Supreme Being. And I allow that light to come into my being to empower the soul to find the peace, to find the joy, and to be in love. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, everyone. Om Shanti. Have a restful night. Om Shanti.